Welcome to Shift Talk, where we talk about the workforce challenges and trends that manufacturers and those in the supply chain industry are facing every day. I'm your host, Adam Ramoth, and in each episode, we'll bring you fun and in-depth conversations with industry experts and thought leaders who are on the front lines of frontline work. All right, so today we've got Hannah Bolte, the Director of Marketing and Communications at Lozier Corporation. Really excited to talk with her. She's got an incredible background in journalism and reporting and now works in the manufacturing industry. Go figure. So Hannah, if you don't mind, give us a quick intro and tell us how you ended up here. Sure. So I'm Hannah Bolte. I am the Director of People Communications and Marketing at Lozier Corporation. Uh, Lozier is a company that I guarantee everyone has interacted with, but very rarely understand Knows they've interacted <laughs> what with what it is. <laughs> Right. So we make the store shelving uh, that is at in virtually every store that you shop in, uh, every supermarket uh, that you go to, every big box store, we make the metal racking that holds the products that you're buying. And then we've partnered with another company to do the technology pieces that go into a checkout counter, self-checkout, and all of the automation in a warehouse. So I guarantee if you've been in a store in the past week, you've touched our product. My journey to Logier to manufacturing, I didn't grow up thinking, I really want to go into manufacturing. That's my dream job. Dressed Maybe up I, as when you were little? I kind of, I wish I would have because it's a really amazing industry to be a part of. But no, I actually, I started my career as a television reporter. Uh, so I was a television reporter on air in Des Moines, Iowa, and then here in Omaha, Nebraska. And I loved it. I loved being able to tell other people's stories. So I ultimately left television news uh, for quite frankly, better balance. Wanted to have a family and those hours were a little challenging when it came to that regard. My husband's a first responder and our schedules yeah. were both really crazy and it just you know, really lined itself to having a family. Fast forward a little bit and there was an opportunity at Logier to really stand up a communication wing of the company and connect a pretty disparate workforce, disparate in the sense that we're disconnected. Logier has five locations throughout the United States. They're separated by distance, but they're also separated by job type. So in the manufacturing sector, you've got your office employees who are pretty connected from a technology perspective. And then you've got your manufacturing plants where there's a myriad of jobs and so you're coming in, you're punching a clock and you're doing, you're doing the work over and over again. And you're not reliant on all of the forms of technology that other roles are. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. And let's be honest, what, what hesitations did you have when you heard about a job opportunity in manufacturing? I had worked in financial services and I had worked at a railroad and those are both very male dominated industries and non-traditional. So when I got the call of, hey, there's a manufacturing company in town looking for someone to really lead communications, I was a little theory because I didn't know that was something that would bring me joy. I have, I, at the time I had young children and the balance, the work-life balance and flexibility, those things were very important to me. And everything I had always heard about manufacturing was like, there's nothing flexible about flexible, that. I was going to say. <laughs> and that might not work really well with the things that I need to prioritize right now in my life. Right. So I had talked to my husband about it and he had told me, don't close the door before like, it's check it out. So you check it out yeah. and you don't, you never know. Just Worst check you can it say out. is no. And I'm so glad I did. So I took his advice and I had interviewed with several people here at Logier and one of them at the time was the head of human resources and she was incredible. And I remember telling her, Hey, I was hesitant to take this interview. I had never viewed manufacturing the way I did before I chatted with her. And I guess I had always thought of manufacturing as it's the stereotypes of right. manufacturing, right? It's dirty, dangerous. They call it the three D's. And I guess in my head, that's how it was. And absolutely wasn't. I think the biggest thing that I had shortchanged it was the opportunities that the industry has for anyone. You could be someone who has no experience whatsoever, come in at an entry level job and work your way up. Or you could be someone like me, who is, I would say, I categorize more as like mid-career, 
and walk in and really be able to make an impact and grow and develop in ways that I wouldn't have otherwise. But the industry is like a choose your own adventure book. You oh, come in and you learn picture. a lot. You come in, you learn a lot and hey, you want to learn about this? Great. Here, like we're going to help you. And I would say it's one of the more supportive industries of all of the different types of work I've done. More supportive industries and uh, learn as you go, continuous improvement mentalities that I've ever been a part of. That's really interesting. You brought up the three D's, right? It came up at the Manufacturing Institute's Workforce Summit last year. I remember Bill Good, who's the uh, Senior VP of Supply Chain with GE Appliances, and he was tackling the question of what is it manufacturing really needs to focus on the next few years? And I was surprised that his answer was not increase in technology or educational background, something to do with operations. He says, it's branding. He says, yep. we've got to do a better job of showing people, especially our local communities where our workers are coming from, what modern manufacturing really looks like. And I loved the way you described it. Have you seen that in your current role that there's still that challenge of breaking down those misnomers of what manufacturing is, what Logier does, what the culture is? What have, What's your experience been so far? Oh, absolutely. Those, unfortunately, that's the rap that the entire industry has gotten and I've been to many manufacturing companies in my role now, and it is, could not be further from the truth. At any manufacturing facility, safety is paramount. There's nothing dangerous about it. The safety right. protocols that are in place are there to protect everyone. And from a dark and dirty perspective, that's so untrue. But I completely agree with GE's sentiment there. It is a branding issue. There is a lot to be said for visiting a manufacturing plant. I have yet to speak to anyone who as a child was all, I want to be in manufacturing one day. But I think it's probably one of the more interesting things about this industry is everyone happened into it and they've grown and evolved in their roles since they started in manufacturing. And that's what makes them like a very well-rounded and very poised in their position that they hold is they bring in that outside perspective of different industries different experience to really lift the company that they're currently working for. That's so true. I was just talking to Vivian Sanchez last week. Same thing. She was in a track to become a nurse and had no inclination of going into manufacturing and now has a whole new purpose in life and helping people. And it, it's a common theme I hear just over and over again when I talk to people, whether it's on the factory floor or in a management role or in communications like yourself that they never understood the opportunities that are in manufacturing and the melting pot of diversity and backgrounds that people are in that are attracted to the industry and realize, wow, this is really cool. We make the things that everyday people rely on. I think one of the big advantages of the industry as a whole is it does provide opportunities wherever you want to go. At least for Lugier, we have people that might start at the plant and then they might mm -hmm. work themselves into a uh, different role that's maybe in the office later in their career. So it's a versatile industry that can grow with you if that's what you desire. But again, there are also roles where, hey, maybe that's not your jam. You don't want to grow, you don't want to expand, or you don't desire a higher position. We have spots for that too. And we yeah. meaning the industry as a whole. Like there, there are opportunities to learn and grow and without ever having to leave the industry as a whole. No, it's a great point. I know Gen Z gets picked on a lot. That's showing that a lot of them aren't interested in management roles. They like the idea of knowing this is what I have to accomplish by the end of today, having tasks, getting it done, and clocking in and clocking out, and that's the end of your workday. Well, and I think a lot of, some of it also goes back to the schools, right? There were, for a long time, success or the formula of success was preached at college, four yep. year, four year, four year get your bachelor's degree and it'll unlock your future. And while that works for a lot of people, it's not this path to success for everyone. That traditional four-year degree isn't, yeah, it's not for everybody. isn't the only, it's not the only way to success, right? The school wasn't really your thing, but maybe working with your hands was. It's, right. Success could look like a career in the skilled trades for you. And you know what? You could do that without college loan debt. 
So I think a lot of it from a branding perspective for manufacturing is rebranding what success looks like for that next generation. It's not just college. You know, college is a component for some people, but you could have a career without a four-year degree and be very successful. Without four years worth of debt added to it. Yeah, right. that's a great point. And a lot of companies will even pay for that schooling, especially if it aligns with the field you're in. Yeah, we definitely do. And I think that helps from a rebranding perspective in the community too, mm -hmm. is the opportunities of success. It's redefining that at all levels. But you've got the education level, your educators, your guidance counselors, your school teachers. Then you've got the parent level of, is this acceptable for a success for your child? And then you've got the, the graduating high school senior level too. You have options. I know when we had talked previously, you shared an experience about what the transition in a workforce that isn't used to the same type of communication across the organization, some of the challenges that brings up, some of the ideas you've come up with to help bridge that gap. So obviously manufacturing works a myriad of different shifts. We primarily have three different shifts and some of our plants, we have more than three shifts, but we operate 24 hours around the clock. So when you think about creating an experience for your employees, especially during the COVID times, like talking about employee experience was at the forefront nationally of every company. It was very apparent in the manufacturing workforce, not just at Logier, that there is a disconnect between employee types. If you sat in front of a computer, you had a really easy way of being communicated with. Here's our plan. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what I need you to know. But if you were operating that machine in the plant or you were welding, you're not sitting in front of a computer all day and you might not actually have an email address to be contacted with. And your relationship with work is more transactional. It's got a start time and an end time. Whereas you mentioned it, if you're in an office job, and especially during the pandemic when things had to get pretty fluid and flexible, work is home and home is work, then that bleeds a little bit. So you're able to be contacted and your relationship with work is just different. And that's fine. But when you don't have that equal playing field, it's hard to have a one-size-fits-all approach to communication. So when I came on at Logier, one of the first tasks I was given was we need to stand up a mobile-first internet. We need a way of communicating with all of our employees across all of our locations. Right. And so we created a mobile first internet. It's an app that our employees can download on their phone. We said, we're not going to do mass emails anymore. This is going to be the one equitable way that we're creating a similar employee experience for all of our employees. It's also on the kiosks and the plants, it's on the computers. And this is how we're going to communicate with our employees about things going on in the company, announcements, opportunities, if to get back in the community, et cetera. And then we started taking a look at more of the employee experience and how can we make that consistent regardless of your job type or the way you view work. In the past, we would have leaders travel to all of our plants to give a state of the company every year. And while our leaders still do go to all of the locations and interact with the teams there and whatnot, we said, if you're giving that same state of Logier half dozen times or more a day, depending on the shift so that you can hit all of the employees in that location at once, right. your delivery is going to be a little different. If your delivery at 4 a.m., you might be tired. It just, it's, there's so much to communication that's beyond what you're saying. It's how you're saying it. It's your body language. It's what you're reading into. And then you give it, say, a fifth or sixth time. Maybe you forgot that one important thing on that, that slide. You forgot to say it because in right. your head, you've said it five other times. So surely <laughs> you said it right now, right? Yeah, I already did it's this. Human nature, right? So we started talking and found a way to live stream, start doing regular updates to the entire company. So we do live stream town halls. We travel to each of the plants and we do it at a different location every quarter. And we live stream it through that mobile first app, the internet app that we have. Yeah. So it provides an opportunity in real time for anyone, anywhere to watch it, hear the same message, hear the same word, get the same delivery at the same time. 
it's also a playback. So if you're on shift or maybe you're sleeping because you just got off of shift, you right. could watch it at your convenience. But what we also started doing was we opened up a question queue ahead of time, like providing right. a feedback loop, really. Because if we're creating an equitable experience for our employees and we're really focused on that employee experience, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask them what's on their mind or what things we could help clear up. So they submit questions. And if we don't have enough time to get to them, we publish them in an article on our intranet afterwards with a Q&A. Oh, that's great. At the same time, we travel the plants to do these. So we're engaging the different groups there and then providing an opportunity for our employees' voice to be heard and elevated and their questions to be answered at a high level. Obviously, we empower our leaders at every one of our facilities to answer these questions too. But sometimes employees have questions for the top leaders of the company that they want to hear from them about. That's a fantastic story because it is difficult to find a communication path that works for the folks working from home, the folks who are in a corporate office, and then those who are on the factory floor. Those are three distinctly different ways of managing your day, managing your time, managing your communication. So have you seen that help since you rolled that out, that communication with employees, no matter where they are, has improved instead of feeling siloed and isolated? I would definitely say so. I would also add that our communication strategy leverages our leaders in every location too. So we're a united front, if you will. They're aware of the questions that come in and they're aligned in response. So we're definitely empowering our leaders to be engaged in those conversations and have the support from them for, on the communication strategy as a whole that really helps at the plant level as well. We have some really great leaders that have helped in those day-to-day -day conversations to help mitigate some of what you're talking about. But as a company-wide as a whole, since we started doing a broader communication strategy, making it an equitable um, experience, to have a quarterly town hall. That frequency seems to be working for us. It's regular enough that folks get updates from our top leaders about how's the company doing, what's coming next, what are right. our top priorities. They feel in the loop and everybody's getting that information at once. Everybody wants feedback. Everybody right. wants, when you're doing a great job, they wanna be recognized. So they wanna be in the loop and they wanna know what's going on. Well, that's incredible, love that. I have to bring up this next topic because you did a great job in product placement. You've got your women in manufacturing sign right behind you, which is a story behind that yep, as well. Right I understand. <laughs> yeah. So it. I am, when I said I didn't grow up thinking I really like, I aspire to be in manufacturing one day, I truly did mean it, but it's been one of the biggest blessings in my life. So this is an incredible career path for me and the opportunity that it has opened are really phenomenal. But one of the opportunities that I had was to join Women in Manufacturing, the Nebraska chapter. So Women in Manufacturing is the national organization that aims to support, promote, and inspire. It's supporting women who have careers in manufacturing, inspiring those who may join a career in manufacturing, and really providing networking opportunities. As you're aware, it's a Manufacturing is another male-dominated industry, providing opportunities for women to support women or even men to support women in these roles and right. non-traditional roles, if you will, is a pretty awesome opportunity. So Women in Manufacturing, it's a national organization. There are different states that have chapters. So I mentioned who I had interviewed with here at Logier for this job. Her name is Tammy Carlson, and she actually worked with some other leaders in manufacturing in the state of Nebraska right before COVID to create a chapter for Nebraska. Oh, wow. It's the Women in Manufacturing Nebraska chapter, and Tammy and I are co-chairs of the board. This sign that's behind me was actually made at one of our events that we engaged high school girls in. October is National Manufacturing Month, and we partnered our local community college here in Omaha, Metropolitan Community College, to host female students from area high schools that had an interest in a career in the trade. And some of them trades a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So they had a couple of instructors at MCC that took these, this group of students and took them into the welding area and they made these out of cheap metal. So, so that cool. was a gift to us. So it's the 
it's a cutout of the state of Nebraska with the Women in Manufacturing logo on it, and it's probably one of my favorite things in my office. The gals there who came out of it, they all made something, and they all walked away with something that they had cut out of metal. And there were a lot of them that walked away, and they're like, oh, my gosh, I never knew I could do that. Right. And we had some really incredible instructors at MCC that kind of helped talk them through it. Like, you've got this. It's fine. Everything's going to be good. Believe in yourself. You can do this. And, oh, you know, they that. walked away with something tangible that they made. They yeah. made it themselves. Back to what the gentleman at GE was talking about. It's about promoting what the industry actually is, right? There's so much out there so about true. what it isn't. And there's not enough out there about what it is and what the future of it looks like. The first advertising campaign in America was to recruit women into manufacturing jobs during World War II. Rosie the Riveter yeah. was the, one of the first advertising campaigns across America. That was manufacturing then. Manufacturing's evolved a lot since then. And I talk about that a lot, where it's women really started that whole movement right. here. <laughs> So By the way, we, we did that a, already. We like, need to fill that. Yeah. We yeah. already did a better we, we, job If at they it. could do it then, we could do it even better now, right? Yeah. That's so true. Um, so it's just, it's about really promoting what the future of manufacturing looks like. It's been a lot of things for a lot of decades, and it's evolving just like every other industry is. So working smarter, not harder, there are opportunities there. There are opportunities to lean into smart ways of manufacturing and the opportunities are really endless should you choose to see it that way. Really appreciate your time today. How you would recommend people could follow you and your story and maybe find out more about women in manufacturing if they're interested? Yeah, connect with me on LinkedIn. Hannah Bolte, send me a connection request and I'd be happy to chat with anyone. And Women in Manufacturing has a website, womeninmanufacturing.org. There are a number of chapters depending on the state that you reside in. And I just encourage you to check it out and get involved. There are a lot of really incredible women, incredible stories. It's not just for women. Men can join. We're happy to have men join too. It's really about promoting women in the industry and giving a support system and really just helping promote the industry and inspire while we're doing so. So there are a lot of opportunities virtually to network. And then they have a number of events in person as well. And it's a really incredible organization to be a part of. I'm excited about where the next few years are going to be as far as helping us diversify and bringing in people from just not just different genders, but different backgrounds. Absolutely. It's a critical conversation and it's really a key one to the future success of the industry.